going to do a valve clearance check on this 1.8 liter 1ZZ FE Toyota engine. This one's installed in a uh, 2005 Pontiac Vibe. Uh, to start with, we're going to disconnect the negative battery terminal and block the wheels because for this procedure we're going to be turning the crankshaft so we don't want the vehicle to move or otherwise uh, engage anything. Uh, we've got to take the engine cover off so there's two 10 millimeter nuts here that come off and then uh, two panel pins here on the back and then the uh, cover lifts up and out of the way. To get to the camshaft and lifters, everything has to come off the top of the valve cover. To start with in the back, where the PCV valve is here, uh, there's a spring clamp. You release that and then slide the hose off the PCV valve. Next, take a screwdriver and lift the tabs up so you can release the harness off of each one of the coil packs. There's uh, two 10 millimeter nuts on the wiring harness. Once those are removed, then the harness here can be lifted up out of the way, which will make it easier to remove the coil packs. The coil packs are held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Remove that. Take each coil pack and then set it above the corresponding cylinder, so that way you can put it back in the correct spot. And next we take this breather tube off. It's got a spring clamp and then it releases free. Then there's a series of uh, bolts on the outside of the valve cover here, all 10 millimeter. Two 10 millimeter nuts, one here and here. Two 10 millimeter bolts in the center of the valve cover. And then depending on the trim of your engine, there's this uh, 12 millimeter stud here that holds the tr plastic trim piece on. All we're gonna do is just crack them so they start to get free. The idea is you wanna work evenly around the valve cover, working diagonally, so as to try to keep stress from uh, warping the valve cover. So everything you wanna do, you wanna do it evenly all the way around the valve cover. Next we have to lift the valve cover off. You don't want to just stick a screwdriver anywhere and pry up because you could damage the mating surfaces causing an oil leak. Uh, here where this front nut is, where it goes right on top of the cylinder head, it sticks way out beyond the gasket. It's got a little gap here. I found that I could stick something in there and then break the valve cover free and then lift it from there. Got the valve cover lifted up. And just to show you, uh, the gasket's uh, one continuous piece, and then it actually goes inside the valve cover here, and then it uh, sticks over the spark plug holes, as well as where the two bolts go and mate into the uh, cylinder head. This engine has a little over 200,000 miles on it, and you can see this dark discoloration here from both the engine oil and combustion products that have collected up here. I can't do much to this because if I try to wipe it down too much, I take a chance of knocking any of that stuff free, which could plug up oil ports or get caught in the bearings. But on the valve cover here, I can thoroughly clean that. Uh, so I'm going to use a uh, en foaming engine cleaner here and uh, spray that down and set it aside while we work on adjusting that. I want to clean up the uh, cylinder head area here. Uh, once the valve cover is removed, there's some gasket maker material here around the spark plugs and other places. I want to carefully scrape that and get that gone so it doesn't fall into the engine or uh, down in your spark plug holes. To be able to get the engine in the top dead center and rotate the cams until we can get the lifter clearances, we'll have to take the uh, car, lift it up, take the tire off, and then remove the splash shield from the uh, passenger side. To remove the splash shield, there's a, a series of panel pins underneath and a couple of 10 millimeter bolts on the inside of the uh, wheel well here. And once you get those free, it more or less kind of tilts and slides into position. And there is the uh, pulley and the 19 millimeter bolt we need uh, to be able to turn the crankshaft. I've gotten everything ready to go here. I got a sheet where I'll be able to record the uh, tolerances for each valve, a feeler gauge with enough blades to measure within the tolerances specified. And I adjusted the engine to top dead center. And you can leave the spark plugs in to keep crud from falling into your cylinders. Uh, in this case, I just took the first one out just to be able to look in there and check the cylinder. Uh, you can still turn it with the spark plugs in, but if you're having a hard time turning it, you can take the spark plugs out. Just make sure to put something over these uh, holes here so nothing falls into your cylinders. So I've turned the crank, and in this case, the exhaust port on cylinder 3, um, the lobe here is pointed straight up. So I'll be able to measure that one first. So I'm going to take a minimum measurement uh, with our minimum uh, specification blade and see if it slides in. 
And in both cases here, it slides in with just a little bit of drag, so that's pretty good. Now I'm going to use the max one. If it slides in underneath, uh, it fails. So let's try it here. And I've slid it, and I can't get it underneath. So our tolerance is good on that one. And same on that. I can't slide it in, so we're good. Now, between that range, I want to find out what the actual tolerance is. So I'll use the uh, blades in the stack here and find out what our true tolerance is, where I can just barely slide the blade in, uh, but it has a bit of drag. And then I'll write that down as the actual. So I've rotated through the feeler gauges here, and I found one where it just slides underneath and it has a, a good amount of drag on it, so I know I'm real close. I checked both of them, and both of these on the cylinder three here are exactly the same, which is great. That means they've worn evenly. So then I go back to my sheet and then make an entry for what the uh, findings were. While the exhaust lobe was pointed up on cylinder three, uh, the intake lobe on cylinder one was pointed up, so I've taken the feeler gauge and checked the tolerances of uh, intake on cylinder one. Uh, when you're using the feeler gauge, you might want to be careful because the thinner they get, uh, they can be very sharp, get basically a paper cut. So move them slowly, uh, take your time, and then wipe off the blades to keep any crud or oil from collecting in your gauge. So I've rotated the crankshaft clockwise until I was able to uh, run all the lobes till they were pointed up and down and I got my measurements. In this case the tolerances on this engine were very good. Uh, the highest reading for the intake was uh, 0.203. Uh, the highest reading for the exhaust was 0.28 and they were all very close to each other. We didn't have any huge discrepancies. So this engine is worn very evenly and there's no adjustment needed. While well, you have the car this far apart there's some things you can do. I went ahead and cleaned up the valve cover here so you can see how much better that looks. Uh, keep that gunk from getting into the engine. On the top of the valve cover here, on the back corner, uh, is this uh, nipple sticking out. That's the PCV valve. While you have it apart, uh, it's a great time to check and change that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a compression test on the uh, cylinders here while I have it this far apart. A little easier to get to the uh, spark plugs. In this car also, the uh, valve uh, timing chain tensioner uh, starting to leak oil around it. So I'll have it apart. I'm going to go ahead and change the o-ring on that and then uh, check it while I have the engine apart. I'm going to go ahead and do a compression check. You'd want to read a manual. Uh, there's a lot of information as far as what you're looking for and how to properly set this test up. In this case I've already removed the uh, fuse for the electronic fuel injection. Uh, that'll keep the uh, injectors from squirting fuel in which could dilute the oil or cause uh, unnecessary wear to the pistons because we will be cranking this quite a bit. And I've already taken my uh, pressure gauge and threaded it into the number one cylinder spark plug hole. Uh, this will be the dry test, so I haven't put any oil in any of the cylinders at this point. Once we complete all four cylinders, we'll come back and do a, uh, a wet test. Now that I've completed both sets of compression checks, dry and wet, I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, checking everything over, clean it up, and then put the valve cover and gasket back on. I went ahead and set the gasket in the valve cover to make sure everything fits. You only have to put seal it in two spaces. Uh, on the front here, where the timing chain cover meets the cylinder head, and the same in the back. Otherwise, you shouldn't have to use any sealant the rest of the way around. The gasket is supposed to be pliable enough uh, should hold everything together. So I've got everything ready to go now. I got the silicone in place. I got the valve cover ready to go and what we'll do is we'll use these two studs here on the front of the engine, line up the valve cover and uh, slowly work it into place and let it rest until we can get the bolt started. Now that I got everything finger tight, I'm going to start torquing everything down in a cross hatch pattern. All the uh, bolts on the outside of the uh, valve cover get torqued to 80 inch pounds. Uh, the two bolts in the center get torqued to 96 inch pounds and everything is 10 millimeter except this one stud here which is uh, 12 millimeter. So I've taken the uh, coilover packs, wiped down the sleeve and then uh, set them back into the corresponding holes that I took them out of. Once I get them set then I can take the wiring harness, lay it back into place, take the two nuts that hold the wiring harness, reattach that and then uh, take the bolts that hold the uh, coil over packs and then uh, insert them. Once the gasket material dries and you have all the wiring and coil packs 
vacuum hose, PCV valve hose, all attached. Uh, you might be able to start it, make sure everything's the way you want it. And then uh, you can put the cover on here, uh, as well as uh, put all the other shielding and anything else you had to remove in the process.